What is up, folks? It's that show. It's that show on Whiskey Wednesday. It's the Mash and Drum. What is going on, folks? It's YouTube slash the Mash and Drum. What is going on? I have to get all the links out there. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. It is Whiskey Wednesday night. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of good shit we're going to be tasting tonight. Uh, some great samples. The newest Chateau de la Scooby Doo. I'm sorry, Chateau de la Baud. Uh, the newest, uh, the new Finnish whiskey. Coming off the legendary Chateau de la Bad, uh, number one, uh, a couple years ago. Uh, this is their follow-up, obviously using different whiskey. Uh, so we're not even going to really try to compare to that one, but we're definitely going to taste this uh, and see how it turns out tonight. I also put this in tonight's blind. So what I wanted to do is challenge myself. So I picked out uh, a bunch of different whiskeys with one singular finish. And tonight's challenge for me is to try to guess that finish. Try to see if I can figure out exactly what finish it is. Is it port? Is it sherry? Is it, um, is it Armagnac? Is it, uh, you know, something else? Uh, is it toasted? Is it, you know, so I just, I think some of them might be easier than others. But, and I think really, you know, with those kind of like those fortified like red wines and brandies and stuff like that might be a little bit dif more difficult to discern. But I figured let's challenge myself tonight a little bit. Let's see how I do um have them in uh, in order here uh so i just have to go through them and taste them we'll do that later we have some news we have some info on blend again happening tonight it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a killer night what is going on everybody we already have 221 hanging out in the chat welcome in uh let's see here we have let's see terrence scott says he's got some ice man in the glass already ready for the blend again and bracket reveal yep we're gonna do that too tonight is the blend again and bracket reveal. I'm going to be off next week. Um, a trip came up to uh, for work that I have to go to uh, next week. I'm going to be in Boston uh, for one quick night. Uh, unfortunately, that's Wednesday night, <laughs> so I'm going to miss my live stream. Um, and then we're going to start blend again with the Frankenstein blends the following week. So the first week in October, we'll start the uh, we'll start the first round of blend again in the Frankenstein blends. But tonight, I haven't done that bracket yet because I'm still, I think, waiting for one or two more blends. But I think I do have all the blends for the American Whiskey Blend. And we'll go through how many we got this year. So it's a, it's a nice bump up from, <laughs> from last year. So it's going to be a crazy competition this year. It's going to be awesome. So uh, let's see here. Four Leaf Whiskey, Dunny, Big Vix, Backyard BS, Gone Fishing, Saucy Shane, Eric Sawyer, Mark S. What's going on, bud? Mike M is here. JG uh dunny in the house yeah you, you gotta love that soothing music in the beginning and then that beat just drops gotta love it uh mr pop don't watch him whiskey wednesday pop him let's go that's right uh did somebody say blend again in brackets yeah todd you're gonna have yourself a nice little bracket there we'll get to it <laughs> what's up rick manasek how you doing buddy uh said hi to jg i see 86 is here adam dorman george watch whiskey mountains what's going on Adriana, nice to see you. Uh, the Whiskey Saint himself, it is Darrell Stewart in the house. What's going on? Uh, Mike Franklin's here. Uh, let's see, John W., Tim Cornet, uh, Kelsey Dropping Dimes in the house, Jeff Perkins, Top Dog here, David Behrens. Uh, Let's see here. Cheers. Definitely a nice surprise birthday present when your wife wins Weller Foolproof Store Pick raffle for you. Damn, Devin. Cheers to the wife. Love that. That's awesome. Uh, Black Ribbon family already singing the already singing the lyrics. That's my that's my part. Raise your drinks up casually. That's my part. <laughs> Mark Emmerman says, "Let's get to it. We're gonna get to. We're getting to it. All right. A bunch of people coming in. I see Richie Z. I see Lochness. I see Paul P. And a bunch of other people coming in tonight. A W here. Did my Frankie submission bottle show up yet? Yes, you are in. You are in A W. Um, Brian Nettleton just had my first pour of the HA 17 year. It did not disappoint, right, Brian? Isn't that shit delicious? It's ridiculous. Um, Joe, you just noticing that now, dude? Joe. Yeah, all the all my BT bottles are over there now on the shelf. And I brought all my turkey bottles right here behind me. So um, yeah. Turkey. I'm tired of people saying, like, oh, you you put down Buffalo Trace all the time, and then you have the you have all their bottles behind you. That's bullshit there, buddy. So I'm like, you know what? I'll freaking move that shit then. I'll put turkey in the I'll put turkey in the in the in the spotlight tonight. 
So I don't know what voice that was, by the way. It was just like some kind of whiskey nerd, I guess. Um, oh, yeah, everyone's starting to get their Barrel King shipping notifications. Guys, the black, the gold, whichever one you got, you're not going to be disappointed. Uh, congrats to all you guys that got those. What's up, Joseph Brazzers is here. Um, Wilderness Trail, eight year in the Glen tonight from Scott Sebastian. What's going on, bud? Great impression of a troll. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Maybe it was just a troll. What's up? Excited to hear thoughts on the Chateau de Logout one this weekend at PBC. Cheers, buddy. Absolutely, Jeff. Can you say that again like Bob Dylan, though? <laughs> uh, why are you living all the buffalo trace out on the barrel? Yeah, I can't. Oh, yeah. That, that was terrible. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Please stay. Please don't leave. Uh, while you're here, hit the subscribe button below uh, if you haven't yet. And also that like button definitely helps the channel out and definitely helps uh, the live videos get noticed. Um, so um, voice sound like Eddie Murphy doing the white guy. <laughs> that might be what it, what it is a little bit. Hey, Sunday Evening Scotch is here. Looking forward to seeing your thoughts on the CDL. Yeah, so I'm actually going to pour this right now here. Let it get a little air time. So the first pour of this bottle was actually in the blind tonight. So I haven't tried this at all yet, but we'll we'll get into this when I let this open up a little bit. Um, hey, Bourbon Wrench is in here. What is going on? Please don't hit thumbs down for that weird voice. Whiskey Mountains, that was Bob Dylan, or I was that was my my was my uh you know my attempt at a Bob Dylan. Uh I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> uh hey, Dusty Dan's in the house. What's going on, Dusty Dan? All right, guys. So as I mentioned tonight, we're going to taste through some a uh, couple cool bottles, a couple some samples. I have some great, uh, I have a great blind flight set up here. It's a, it's a mix of finishes. I'm not sure uh, what my lady uh, poured for me, but it's a challenge. Nonetheless, we're going to try to pick out what these finishes are. So it should be the only one that I know that's in the blind is this one. Um, well, I know kind of the grouping of bottles. But I don't know which one were I don't know I don't know which ones were chosen to go into the blind. Uh, this is the only one that I know that's in there because I just want to see how it how it stacks up against some other finished whiskeys just to just to test it. You guys know I like to test it like right out the gate. Let's see what happens. Um, what's been going on? What has been going on this week? Um, yeah, besides the Barrel Kings uh, starting to get shipped out, um, was on got to uh, had a really fun day today. Uh, here in, I don't know if you guys heard, but you know, uh, Kenny and Ryan from uh, Bourbon Pursuit uh, released their Pursuit United bottles right here in Ohio this week, and they're doing kind of a little bit of a uh, of a tour of Ohio. And they were in Columbus today. Well, actually, Kenny was. Ryan wasn't around, so uh, I went over to I think the Hills Market. And uh, I don't know if anybody watching, if I ran into you there today. I was there around I don't know, like twelve, twelve fifteen. Walked in, I wanted to say hi to Kenny, and um, he signed my bottle, which I thought was pretty cool. I told Kenny, I'm like, hey, Kenny, just uh, sign this for me so I can, you know, I can resell it on the on the black market. I can resell it on the secondary market for, you know, 30%, you know, under what it's worth now because you signed it. <laughs> you know, just to fuck with him a little bit. And, um, yeah, it was just kind of cool, you know, showing up, just showing him some support. Love those guys. Uh, so that, that was kind of fun uh, today to, to talk to him a little bit and, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's an exciting thing. I, I, I hope that could be in my future one day or at least my own whiskey. We'll, we'll see what happens, uh, down the line here, but when I'm a, women of whiskeys is here, how you doing ladies, everybody should please subscribe to women of whiskeys. Uh, they should be following me tonight at 11 o'clock. Um, and I will say that the, the creativity this year for blend together the names, some of the labels have been incredible. So you guys really went all out this year. I think the winner, though, I think the winner has to be William Davilar. William Davilar, he, the dude sent, I'll show it to you, you know, in the couple, in the first round of Blendageddon. He sent like this little briefcase. It was like a little tiny plastic briefcase that had a sticker on it that said top secret. And then you kind of unclick it you slide it open and then you open it and it's it's like that part in pulp fiction when it's just like this glowing thing you don't know exactly what's in the briefcase but then he had all his his blends laid out all neatly the names it was legit it was legit like like if somebody walked in with that briefcase like the guy like i not now he came really close to winning blend again last year um will davilar and 
even I know he's a very, very good and capable blender, but even if he didn't know shit about blending, if that dude walked in with that briefcase and popped it open, I would have been like, oh shit, this guy is serious because <laughs> the presentation was awesome. So uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Master and Jump, shameless plug. Have you checked out the Dram Face podcast yet? We're about to ramp up for season two recording. Time for Jam, I have not yet. Um, I will make sure I get on that. I will add that to my uh, to my list. So time for a dram. You know, I'll make myself a little note here. Um, shameless plug. All right. Well, everybody take a listen to Time for a Dram. Ramp up for season two recording. All right. I like it. Uh, 21090 is here. There's William Davilar. See? Uh, William, amazing presentation. Honestly, dude. Um, Jeffrey Wack also had a great presentation because he literally gave me the blend with infused olive oil in it using vegetables from his garden. Um, some will see that as a slight bribe. I see it as just a nice gesture to go along with his blend. <laughs> Jason C, the other Jason, another Jason C in the house. What's up, Jason Cueto, food and bourbon. Go check him out on Instagram. Thanks so much. Dude is a legit chef. Eric Sawyer, he's sipping butterflies. There's actually a good blend name in that too. So um, uh, what's up, JC? Uh, JC Marisigan. Nice. You haven't really missed much yet. We're about to jump into this Chateau de la Scooby-Doo. Uh, let's see here. Um, I wanted to pull up. Let's see here. Okay. All right. So here's the, I just want to make sure I get all the details right. Cause it's a little bit harder to read on this because I'm, my eyes are getting old. All right. Uh, 2022 Chateau de Labad Armagnac release. That's right, guys. We're diving right into this shit. Includes a blend of Kentucky bourbon, 12 years old. So you got a nice 12-year-old Kentucky bourbon in there. Um, and, and that good old Tennessee bourbon, aged 10 years. Finished in Labad Armagnac cast for another 16 months. Um, the last one, I believe, was an 18-month finish. This is 16 the finishing cast themselves age from 16 to 24 months in different warehouse locations. Okay. Different wood extraction, blah, blah, blah. Um, all right. Shit. Let's get into here. Let's get into this shit. I've been waiting to try this one. Uh, hey, Sandy Chima is here. Um, the World Stop Whiskey Taster is here. Is that Matt? Matt ADHD Whiskey is here? Oh, shit. There he is. Hi, hi, hi. What's up? Dude, impressive. You said my last name correctly. <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm either like totally wrong or I'm spot on. So uh, first super chat of the night from my man, Tony Bag of Donuts. Just picked up the Chateau today. I'm taking a break from cleaning a broken pipe, flooded basement. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Damn, dude. Hope that's uh, cleaning up nicely. I actually want to thank uh, Wise Guy Whiskey Guy for uh, grabbing me this bottle. Um, he was uh, kind enough to find it. For me before I got to uh before I got to find it. Uh hey, my bourbon journey is here. What's up, Scotty Too Hotty? <laughs> uh yes, stuff and whiskey, Josh and Aaron, wood extraction. A lot of wood extraction talk tonight. Just saying. All right. Um oh proof. Proof is the last thing I gotta tell you guys. 107. So 107 proof on this one. Nice. Uh now, Armagnac tends to put out some really interesting flavors. Usually, you know, you'll get you get a lot of baking spices. You usually get some, you know, some stewed fruits or, you know, pears or cinnamon. And I get like this really interesting. And I wouldn't have known this note unless uh, Nancy Fraley kind of introduced it to me. But, you know, when uh, when it's like so we're getting close to fall right now and like the fall leaves will start dropping at some point and then it rains and then you kind of get like those wet fall leaves, like that aroma. Like that's a note that I would have never thought would arrive in a whiskey. And then um, I remember uh, Nancy Fraley being like, hey, if you've ever had good Armagnacs, look for this like fall leaf note. I was like, what the fuck? Like, how does that even happen? But that's because she's Nancy Fraley. All right, let's get into this one here, guys. Now. I'm telling you now, don't ask me to don't ask me to uh, to to compare it to last to the last one. That's a completely different whiskey. That's 12 year MGP. And I only have one unopened bottle and I'm not opening it. 
I'm saving that one for a special occasion. So uh, let's see here. All right. So I, I don't know if it's my mind playing with me, but I definitely getting like cinnamon and I'm getting pear. I'm getting a lot of, you know, like fresh pears. Maybe like, yeah, I'm getting all the cinnamons on here too. It's a perfect fall glass. Like charred, like over charred um, orange peels. Not so much citrus, but the like an actual orange peel. There's like a charred orange peel to it. Hey man, compared to the last one, just kidding. I've got one left too and I'm not sure when I'll crack into it. Yeah, Mike, I'm not. I'm going to save that for a special occasion. I don't know what it's going to be. Let's see here. There's also a good, like, punch of sweetness. There's, like, a, I think the, now, one thing, you know, a lot of people don't like, you know, when they, when they hear, like, George Dickel whiskey. One thing that George Dickel whiskey does get really good at as it gets older is the, is, that, like, that, that deep, rich, cinnamon orange combination and i think that with like the pears and a little bit of the dark fruits of the of the armagnac are actually playing really nice together so on the nose for me kind of a winner it definitely does not smell like the last one i could i could definitely tell that the last one i felt like had more armagnac um uh more of an armagnac type maturation and, and type of impact on that whiskey Whereas this one, I can really smell the whiskey coming through. I'm still getting like nice toasted vanillas. Any thoughts about BBC Fusion going away, says Lionel G. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll talk about that coming up in a little bit, Lionel. Um, I think it was just a matter of time, to be honest, but we'll get into that a little bit. All right. I can't not sip this uh, anymore. First impressions, Chateau de Labade, take two. Here we go. Mm. Ooh, that hit, that hit all up front. Again, it's the first pour of the night, so you can't always go by that because you have to, you know, I, I like taking those subsequent sips to see if it holds true, if it stays consistent. Man, I got a lot of, I got a lot of raisin on the palate. All that raisin, like that grape, um, that grapiness, I should say, is kind of coming through. But it's not like a fake grape. It's not like, like a bubblegum grape type note it's more of a of a fresh grape note a little bit of raisin all the cinnamon is there almost like a, a little bit of a um a cinnamon roll ish it's like cinnamon roll with like orange marmalade and like a little grape on top <laughs> and then you get a little bit of this spice there that kind of lingers around 107 proof not too bad Second sip, more of the oak came in. I did not expect that. More of the oak and the spice came in on this one. More of the raisin still there. There's a nuttiness to it as well, but I can't quite... I don't think it's an almond. I It's not like peanut butter nuttiness but there's i'm definitely getting some sort of maybe like a cinnamon like one of those like cinnamon covered like peanuts or something like that there's a nutty quality to it maybe it's like a cashew because it feels like a like a textural nuttiness to it sounds weird to say but uh color of the whiskey you guys could see it it's got a really nice color to it it's pretty Pretty, uh, I think it's got a good color. I don't think it's super dark, but it definitely has some nice, uh, some nice color to it. Kind of like a, I would say a medium amber. Fireball, <laughs> fireball peanuts. I think it's fireball peanuts. You know what? Maybe it is, maybe it just is almonds. Maybe it's just like a nice, like cinnamon almond, but there's a definite nuttiness to it. Uh, 
All right, so fourth, fifth sip in. I'll say this. Man, it's got a sneaky finish to it. Like, you don't expect this, like, real spice-driven thing to it. That, I mean, because it does drink light on the palate, which is a little bit disappointing. It's not the flavor monster that I felt like the first one was. It's very delicate. It's nuanced on the palate, but it doesn't, like, really hit you. Um, the spice, though, on the finish on this, like, I kind of like, although it is a little bit on the oaky side. Like a little bit more of an oak and like an oak driven spice comes on the back end of this. And it's, yeah, it's just like kind of lingering. It's crazy. All right. Let's do one last sip and try to do the whole experience here and kind of get my final thoughts. All right. That one, that last sip I just took, that's where kind of the arming yak took over. The grape, there's like a little bit of a funkiness to it. Just the complete charred orange peel. I'm not so much getting the pear that I was getting on the nose. I am getting the cinnamon. The grape is there. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm really getting like that fall leaf note that I was getting in the first uh, Chateau de la Baude. Uh, and then on the back end, it's just kind of like some nice spice. Um, cinnamon, maybe some nutmeg there too. And that slight bit of almond. I think that kind of encapsulates like, encapsulate, like everything I'm tasting. Um, so I think the best part of this whiskey is actually the, the finish of it. I do like the finish of this one. Um, ADH says, I think we're on the same page. Now I didn't watch your video yet. I'm going to go back and watch it now because I, um, I, uh, I didn't want to get you know, I didn't want to get, you know, I didn't want Matt to influence me in any way. And that's just like something I think a lot of us do. But I think this could really change as it opens up like the last one did. But I thought the last one was definitely more Armagnac heavy than this one is. I feel like on this one, you could taste more of the whiskey. You could taste the bourbon. I think the Tennessee whiskey comes through, but it's not overly Dickel Lee, <laughs> however you want to say it. It's not overly George Dickel. I think the like the uh, like the flame broiled uh, orange peel, the cinnamon, all that heaviness to that part of it might be playing really nicely with the uh, with the Armagnac. But I think the Armagnac, as this as I keep sipping this, the Armagnac is starting to come to the forefront a little bit more. More of the grape. I swear to God, ADHD whiskey, you tell me in the chat. I just took that sip and I got blueberries. I know he's the king of picking up blueberries, but that sip right there, I got like a blueberry grape combo, which is pretty delicious. So I love the finish on this one. I do, however, think the, the palate isn't as in your face as the last Chateau de la Baude was. However, that one was a 12-year MGP high rye. Um, this is a 12 year old Kentucky, but we're not sure exactly, uh, what distillery they used, but a 12 year Kentucky bourbon should have some nice oak and spice to it. I think this definitely brings the oak and spice on it, but as far as the palate goes, I do want a little bit more oomph, but I feel like this is opening up nicely. So this, this might end up, I, I mean, honestly, overall, this is probably my favorite, uh, finish that they've done recently. Um, I wasn't too crazy about the Ferrand, and I wasn't really too crazy about the, the Plantation Rum finish. However, I thought it was a great finish, but I thought both of them just drank really light. I think this has a little bit more heft, a little bit more spice. Um, it's not as powerful to me as the last Chateau de la Baude, but overall, I mean, I, think, I just think that Chateau de la Baude Armagnac is kind of magical. Um. I think seeing 80 you see we got blue. I'm serious. I got blueberries. <laughs> Keep an eye out for the Russell Reserve single Rick House for you. We need to review it. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, Andrew, I'm I'm willing to to pay. I'm not gonna say how much I'm willing to pay to get that bottle, but I'm willing to do very naughty things to have that single Rick House bottle. Um Let's see here. And BBC would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for that meddling dickle. 
I mean, honestly, I just don't really feel like uh, you get a lot of that. Uh, does anyone want to taste grape in their whiskey? Not me. Um, oh, shit. He said that, too. Yeah, I think there's like a definite blueberry grape thing going on. Um, better than Founders. Oh, man. It's a good question. I mean, they're two completely different whiskeys. I mean, I really love Founders, but you have to really just like chocolate and coffee and and that where and this is on the like baking spice cinnamon and fruit like dark fruit side i just i mean those are just basically mood pours josh and aaron it's 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 kind of is it viscous this is a good question i think that's also where it's lacking a little bit for me not as much as the first one it's not as mouth coating as i remember But yeah, the flavor's there. And the more I'm sipping this, the more citrus is coming out, more of that orange peel, more of the grape, the blueberry, and that spice is holding true. Um, I think it's really good. I'm, I'm, I think you could probably just, you could house that pretty fast. It's got a nice finish to it, so you got to give it time. I feel like it's got a sneaky finish. So as you know, when you sip it, just kind of let it sit on the palate a little bit, and then you'll start feeling like this effervescence on the back end of it. And then you'll be like, oh, you get a little Kentucky hug. Um, I think the only downfall to it is it's it's not as viscous as the first one. I, I really do believe that. And I also think that the um, the front of the palate isn't as in your face as the last one was. However, it, it's hard to compare this because it's two completely different whiskeys. I do like this blend. Um, I, I see a lot of people liking this one. Do I feel like it's as good or better than the first one? If I'm remembering correctly, no. But this is a damn good finished whiskey from Barstown Bourbon Company. Such a good one, in fact, that I'm going to just keep sipping on this shit. So I'm going to kind of put that down there a little bit more. See how this opens up over time. Uh, yeah, I would agree, wise guy. I think for 107 proof, there's just like this lingering spice, and I'm still getting it. I think that's the best part of it. It really is. The front of the palate's good, but the finish, like three quarters of the way back in the palate and the finish is great. So, Tom, I love the founders because I love stout. I love stout. I had a, my nickname was Stout Belly back in the day. I love stout. So the founder stout finish was freaking delicious. But again, like I said, it's a very singular whiskey. It, it's not going to be that finished uh, bourbon wasn't going to be like this. Um, uh like this super dense and nuanced flavor, you know, flavor combination. You're going to get chocolate, you're going to have coffee, you're going to get a little bit of like that, that maltiness from the beer finish. And that's really all it was. And if you're okay with that, it was pretty delicious. And I think it did play well with the, uh, with the dickle that was using that again, a little bit of that orange mixing with the chocolate, the coffee. I think it was, it was a nice, uh, it was a nice whiskey. All right. Let's, uh, let's get into a little bit of news here. Now, um, 75, 13, so it was usually beam or turkey, right? Correct. It's the same mash bill. It's usually beam or usually turkey, uh, for sure. $170 price point on this. Yeah. The first, uh, Chateau de la Bade was what? 130, 140 ish. So they're, they are going up, but so is everything else. So I can't really fault them for that. Um, also to source Armagnac casks is pretty expensive. So sourcing and getting those casks, casks over here. You know, might be more expensive nowadays. So all that's going to factor into the price. I think I think people see price and they think black and white. Like, why is this forty dollars more expensive than it was when I got it the last time? A lot of shit has happened since then, guys. So inflation, costs, everything has gone up, which is in turn going to bring drive the price of the whiskey up. It's not because the distillery thinks, oh my god, we're going to charge them more because we feel like, you know, they're going to pay it. I mean, we most likely are going to pay it, but I think there's a lot of that a lot of those costs are out of their hands and that's just what they have to, uh, you know, what they have to pay to, to make some money on the bottle. Um, I apparently need to eat more blueberries. Not something I've ever gotten from whiskey. <laughs> I don't get it often either, Adriana, but every now and again, I've gotten it twice this year, this and that Joseph Magnus batch 85 cigar blend. Those two whiskeys I've gotten blueberries, but it doesn't happen often. It's kind of like a, yeah, it's blue blueberries. Well, how am I blueberries? Okay, 
Um, let's see here. Last time I got blueberries was in seagrass. Okay, I could see that. Best finished bourbon whiskey of the year. Oh man. You know, it's hard not to, uh, it's hard right now. It's hard not to put like Kelvin Collab 4 up there, the Joseph Magnus 85 that I mentioned earlier. Um, I mean, this could this could maybe give it a run. You never know how it's going to do with a blind. This is a really nice entry into that, into that area. Um, you know, honestly, some of the, like the, I would probably even throw like one of the, what do you call it? The Amburana casts that I've had. Um, I don't know, like you want to say Starlight. You want to say, you know, the one I tried from uh, from ASW out of Atlanta. But those are, they're so, the only reason why I call it out because it's just so unique. Just such a unique whiskey. Um, and even though it's not a strong finish on this bourbon, the one I just, the one I just reviewed, that Yellowstone Madeira, I'm sorry, the Marsala Superior finish. Dude, I love that bourbon. I think it's a great bourbon. I think it's, I definitely think it's using a lot more older whiskey than last year. Last year, there was a youthful thing to it, the Amarone cask finish. But I think this year, they they used some of that 15, 16-year-old bourbon a little bit more. At least it seemed that way on the palate. And I think the Madeira just gave it a nice little balance. So um, I just saw an Knob Creek 18 on my go-to store. It was marked up to 450. So I got to try that uh, at a bar uh, a couple weekends ago. And all I say, all I'll say is that uh, off of first impressions, I really liked it. It had like a dusty note to it. It had a lot of, I mean, it's oaky. It's very oak forward. You're going to feel, you're going to taste that oak. Uh, but there was also a nice spice to it, which I really liked. Um, maybe from the oak tannins, um, there was like a tad, like a little bit of like a toffee, like a toffee note to it. But again, this was in a bar. I wasn't, it was in a big glass. I wasn't really nosing it. So I'll have to get my hands on that if I could find one of those too. Um, yeah, the founders is, was, is legit. Founders was the bomb. Well, I got a lot of catching up to do. Is that a distillery only release? Uh, no, this should pop up in stores. Um, actually, let me check to see what it says here. Uh, will be available through the Bartstown Bourbon Company gift shop at retailers in 20 states and online at sealbox.com. So 2,700 cases, six bottles each. Do the math. So a good amount of those will be available. That's what's nice about blends. You're going to get a good amount of bottles in the blends. Um, uh, so let's see here. Inflation, it's up more than 8%. And that's reported. So I always expect a higher price for most things. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Finish of the year is sherry pie. Yeah, the sherry pie, dude. Justin, yep. Really, really good shit too. Um, just came back from the Bourbon Road to the Buffalo Tour today and Old Forester. So what'd you think, Dr. Detroit? What'd you think of your experience? So I'm going to continue to sip on that. Blueberries. Friggin' blueberries. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Jason, I just, wa I just was just expecting to do your price on ADH. So when, yeah. yeah, blueberries. Friggin' blueberries. <laughs> I can just hear him saying it right now. Um, all right. So it's not really a, uh, you know, what's to see on the TTB, but there are some new stories that kind of dropped. Um, I didn't really see any new labels as of uh, late, but um, we talked a little bit about, speaking of Bartstown, we talked about the, uh, the Fusion series. And uh, they are concluding the series. With their favorite creation to date, Bartstown Bourbon Company unveiled their final Fusion Series whiskeys. Uh, this is going to be Fusion 8 and, um, let's see here, the 8th and 9th expressions available in the gift shop, online, and at retailers, again, across the 20 states. Um, releases combine older and younger whiskeys. Both Fusion 8 and Fusion 9 feature a four-year-old bourbon from Bartstown Bourbon Company, the oldest bourbon yet released by the brand. Fusion 8 is made of 58% of a four-year bourbon from Barstown Bourbon Company, 12% of a different four-year bourbon, and 30% of a 12-year Kentucky bourbon. Fusion 9 is uh, more of the four-year, 22% uh, of the other four-year, and then 30% of a 12-year Kentucky bourbon. So 95.5 uh, proof uh, for 8 
and Fusion 9 will be 96.8 proof, both 65 bucks. So this really just makes way for their upcoming releases uh, that we've already seen press releases on, stuff that that's, that's upcoming. We've seen stuff on the TTV. You know, their Barsom Rubicon is getting ready to release their own, you know, bottled and bond whiskeys now that they're coming of age. Uh, their ride, their bottled and bond. And I think as this comes forward, uh, they're going to want to, you know, supply more of us with, with that whiskey rather than throwing it into a blend of the fusion. Uh, this way they could save those older stocks for, you know, releases like this. And then they could kind of bring forward um, some of their own stuff that they've been, you know, that they've been working on and perfecting and aging over the last several years. So all that stuff's ready to go and we're going to see it real soon. So that's really kind of the way it, you know, I thought it would go. There's only so much you could kind of keep putting out these fusion blends. Now it's time for Barstown Bourbon Company to put out their own stuff fully in a bottle. Their bottled and bond bourbon expressions, their weeded bourbon. I think their rye based bourbon. And I think actually a rye as well. So we should see, if not all of those, we should see at least a couple of those real soon. So I'm excited. What do you guys think about that? Are you, I don't think really think anyone is really going to, I mean, no offense against Barstown Bourbon Company, but I just don't think anyone's going to really miss the Fusion series. It's just one of those, those series that I think being 65 bucks, it kind of priced itself out. I really don't see a lot of people buying those uh, whiskeys or talking about them too much. I do think there are some batches that are better than others, but I also just feel like at the price for 65 bucks, knowing there's a four-year-old whiskey in it, you know, I do like the transparency, obviously, obviously, but I don't know. I just feel like no one's really going to really miss it. I would much rather drink some of Bart's on Bourbon Company's old uh, own stuff, like straight, you know, without, uh, you know, any blending. So um, the 117 Forester is out of this world. Oh, you have to try the 117. There you go. Uh, bring on origin, money ready to spend. Yes. All about the origin, Robert Lee. Um, let's see here. Buffalo Trace Tour is better, but the Old Forester tasting is better, in my opinion. Larry Owens, I would highly agree with you. Where the fuck is Fusion 7? <laughs> Fusion 7 came out. Uh, oh, there's Ron Miles from Barstow Bourbon Company. Look for Fusion to come back someday when we can replace the source bourbon with older bourbon we distilled. Could be cool. Oh, like almost like a... I see what you're saying there, Ron. Yeah, it's almost like Fusion the sequel. Can we call a fusion reactor? Can we call a fusion reactor for the when that happens? When you guys get enough stuff that comes out that's ready to blend with your younger stuff, we'll call it the fusion reactor series. And then you could pay me for royalties for coming up with that later. I'm just saying. <laughs> Agree, 21090. Um, let's see. But Fusion 7 hasn't been in Ohio yet. Ohio tends to get the Barstown Berman Company stuff a little bit later than others. So that's really not surprising, Adam. Uh, will the price go down when it's 100% theirs? Uh, I'm not sure what the pricing on those are going to be. I don't know if Ron can say anything yet. Um, but, yeah. Just poured a little of chocolate waste. Man, I forgot how good this one is. Oh, yeah, the double oaked for sure. I, I thought I heard uh, I thought I heard that it was going to be like 55, 60 bucks for their stuff. I'm not sure if I'm – I'm not sure if I'm, uh, if I'm talking out of turn there, Ron, but I thought that's what I read. Every time I sip this Chateau de Labade, it's changing. That one is all citrus. Oh, and then a little bit of the grape and blueberry in the back end, and then the spice. But man, it's kind of, this is just going to be one of those ever-evolving whiskeys. But I love the flavors I'm getting out of it so far. It's really nice. Um, yeah, I was a big fan of Discovery 8. I thought Discovery 8 was great. Uh, another super chat, Justin Parry with a five-hour super chat. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Love the super chats, guys. Thank you so much. Our white label 96 proof bourbon six year age statement is $44.99. The black label bottle and bond we did six year bourbon for 50 bucks. I think those are solid prices, especially for today's market. Six year, two six year age stated bourbons for 50 bucks or under. In the to quote one of my favorite movies. That's how you do it, Smalls. That's how you do it, Smalls. Was down in your area yesterday. Had Wells Special Reserve sitting on the shelf at Giant Eagle uh, Grocery Store. Yeah, I mean, Wellers are 
you know, Weller over here is like fucking Jim Beam white label most of the time. The green label just hangs out, honestly. All right. Next story up. Oh, here it comes, guys. There it is. Woodford Reserve. Woodford Reserve coming out with their, their honey cask, their honey finish. Um, let me get to the details here. Uh, where was that one? I believe. So, as you guys see that Woodford Reserve bottle, that's going to be a, uh, a distillery release only. I think some of them hit stores in Kentucky, but I, I think most of them are at the distillery. Um, so this is kind of an interesting thing. It's a honey barrel finish. Again, you're looking at, um, you know, 45.2% ABV, that good old 90.4 that Woodford Reserve just loves. Uh, yeah, this is distillery only and limited Kentucky retail retailers, 6,500 bottles. This was, uh, poured out to celebrate bourbon heritage month. Woodford Reserve has unveiled its latest distillery exclusive, a blend of Woodford Reserve whiskey finished for over a year on average in honey barrels from double barrel honey in Winchester, Kentucky, and straight bourbon. Um, so no age statement, nothing like that, but distillery exclusive. Listen, people, people love honey finished anything. If there's, if there's any way to make a bourbon fucking sweeter, people are all about it. So there it is. Honey finished bourbon. Let's see. Let's see the comments. I, I feel like the honey was special. Remember when Bellmead honey was like the thing? It was the only honey one that was really kind of in the game. And then people lined up miles and miles and miles to get that bourbon. And then it was on secondary for like a thousand dollars. You remember, remember those days? And then people kind of caught on and said, wow, look at all the success that these guys are getting with these honey finishes. Now there's just fucking honey finishes everywhere. Starlight's doing them. Nulu's doing them. Uh, we did one with Redline. There's a lot of honey cast finishes. Woodford Reserve not getting in the game doing a honey finish. Um, I just think in today's day and age when you have these, these profiles that just seem to be getting sweeter and sweeter and sweeter, a honey finish is just kind of the next step in the evolution of that. So um, let's see here. Uh, they do for sure distribute in Kentucky stores. Yep, that's what it said, Rick. Yep, for sure. Um, can't wait until Fourgate does their honey barrels. Uh, the Redline honey was solid, though. Yeah, I love the Redline honey we did. It was, it was a perfect summer sipper. It really was. Woodford just disappoints me a lot. Most of the time they do. However, this baby this year, ooh, very, very nice. Oh, and I don't know if you guys noticed, this is my uh, Max Scherzer bobblehead. Uh, great viewer, Jeff Tyree, got this for me when he was in New York. And uh, can't thank him enough for sending that. He went to the game, got me an extra. So, yeah, Mets clinched the playoff berth. And it's going to go down to that last series, Mets versus Braves, to see who's going to clinch the East. It's going to be a crazy last weekend. Baseball is, I mean, what Judge is doing this year for the Yankees, even though I hate the fucking Yankees, got to be impressed with that. That dude's going to make $400 gazillion next year. He bet on himself, and he he went all in on Aaron Judge. And the guy's, did he even break the record tonight? He probably broke it already. Did he hit the 61 or whatever it was? I mean, he hit 60 last night. Just crazy. Yeah, and, and uh, the Mets, it seems like the Mets lost today. And the Braves lost today. But every time the Mets win, the Braves win. It's like they can't, they can't like go off <laughs> at any given moment. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, Copper Wolf, I'm pretty – I was a huge fan of the Nulu uh, finished honey, the, the Nulu honey finish. Um, I, I like that one a lot. Um, Daniel Carter's in here, number 21, Stout Belly. That's me. <laughs> Uh, Scherzer bet on himself and also got paid. I'm still pissed about it. Yeah, he did. He did. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. It's a gamble, though. All right. Guys, here we go. You ready for this? Finally. Finally, these bottles. We got some information on it. Bourbon Wrench, if you're watching, I know you got excited when you saw these. Here it is, folks. Maker's Mark, the 2022 limited release finishing series. Uh, the details were finally announced uh, this week. Um, so it sports the name BRT01 and BRT02, as you see in the photo. 
The name BRT was given to these expressions because of the influence in their consistent practice of hand barrel rotation. So that's what BRT is, barrel rotation, and temperature has on our whiskey process. So made to be enjoyed as a pair. BRT is inspired by the tasting notes found at the hotter top of the rack house. BRT02 is inspired by tasting notes found at the cooler bottom, uh, bottom part of the warehouse. So together they give people the unique opportunity and experience with the characteristics responsible for the original makers Mark come from so they could reach a new level of understanding of whiskey. Um, so real quick, guys, the BRT1 tasting notes. Now, if I had to go in on one of them, this would be the one I would want because it's the higher point of the Rick House. It says caramel butterscotch mixed with sweet spice, warm toasty, hints of honey, brown sugar, stone fruit. Um, the other one, the BR2 tasting notes, oak nuttiness combined with molasses, prevalent dark fruit and chocolate baking spices. So uh, one seems a little bit light. One seems a little bit dark. It's kind of a nice contrast. Uh, but, you know, I'm always I'm always up for these. I, I like the the wood finishing series from um, from Maker's Mark. It's going to be interesting to see where it goes now that Denny Potter and, uh, and Jane Bowie have have left uh, to do their own thing. Uh, my guess is that they probably have the next, you know, however many releases, you know, already cooking right now as far as what's going to be coming out in that wood finishing series. Now, where now if there's a cutoff or it changes to something else, we don't know. Um, but I do know what they were working on for so many years was, I know Jane Bowie. I mean, she was working on stuff that I remember. I remember them saying that our our like great great grandkids won't even taste yet. It's like stuff like that far in advance. So it'll be interesting to see how it evolves with both of them departing Maker's Mark. And to see what starts coming out of those uh, doors. I mean, no matter what, Maker's Mark is always going to be one of the top selling brands of bourbon in the United States. Whether it's their Weeded, just their Standard Makers, where it's their uh, 46, the Wood Finishing Series, the Private Selects. Their thing is consistency. You know you're going to get that same thing every time you open Maker's Mark. Um, that's, what they, that's what they pride themselves on. Um, they call it, you know, taste division. That's why they're continuously ro rotating barrels. Uh, because they don't want barrels that taste different up on the top of the rickhouse to be different than the bottom of the warehouse. So they continuously rotate them so it's as consistent as possible. So, so uh, yeah. And I think that's it as far as, uh, as far as the news goes. Like I said, there wasn't a lot to talk about. Um, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat here. Uh, Bert and Ernie, um, I need both, says Sean Willis. <laughs> Same proof, though. Um, actually, let's see here. What does the proof say? Um, so BRT2, 109.4. BRT1, 109.4. Yep, both of them the same proof, which is interesting. How did that happen? Hmm. Like, was that – did they specifically aim for that proof, or did that just happen naturally? That's, that's a good question. Going to have to ask them that. But that BR2 has that viscosity. I mean, that's what it says, Brian. We'll see. Smart marketing meant to be enjoyed as a pair, a.k.a. buy twice as much. Yeah, they want you to buy both, of course. It's a smart – it is a smart marketing move just in general from Maker's Mark. It's, it's what they did with the, uh, the FA, uh, FAE series 1 and 2. It, it's a taste and contrast, and you get to taste one or like the one or the other. Which one's better than what? Gets the people talking. You're wrong. I'm right. Blah, blah, blah. Back and forth. All the shit. So that's what happens. Um, I never see makers around me. Really, Dusty? No, you don't see makers around you? That's hard to believe. That shit's everywhere. BRT, BRT2 with French Oak Stave sounds like FAEO2 Part 2. I still have it on my radar. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still all about it. Makers Mark Wood Series is my favorite. Okay. Uh, I'm pumped for the Makers Twins this year. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be coming out in the fall, so pretty soon. Maker's Mark just doesn't spin my web. Doesn't spin my web. It doesn't uh, doesn't make the monkey go in your wrench. No, doesn't do any of that for you. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> ADHD whiskey. Just watch your review on Chateau de Bod. Wash hands. Wash hands. <laughs> Bourbon boogie in the house. Uh, just found FE one about two weeks ago. Couldn't believe it. You just found that that one two weeks ago. Damn. 
The standard releases are around, but not the, oh, the wood finish series, Dusty. I see what you're saying. The wood finishing series are not around too much. All right, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean that's what it is. It's the business of bourbon. That's 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 what it is. Um, I have seen so many people lately just completely just shitting on pricing and uh, and the. You know, when I when I look across Kentucky and I look at distilleries, I was thinking about this the other day. I may do a video on it. Uh, just basically looking at some of the big time distilleries. Let's take out the smaller distilleries. Let's take out the, you know, the craft distilleries, whatever you want to call them, even though they're all technically craft because they're all making something from scratch um, unless they're sourcing. If you look at the the heritage brands, you look at some of the bigger brands that are out there right now. So this this might start a rant. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see where this goes. You look at Jim Beam. You look at Buffalo Trace. Look at Heaven Hill. Look at Four Roses. Um, you look at Old Forester. Um, I mean, who else would I put in there? Uh, yeah, Heaven Hill. I mean, maybe Lux Row you could throw in there. But if you're really just talking about the big distillers, the, the big ones that everyone goes to see, uh, oh, even Wild Turkey. Uh, how can I forget Wild Turkey? We'll throw Wild Turkey in the mix as well. I'm looking at my, uh, my shelves. Uh, and Maker's Mark. The, like the patterns that you start seeing is, one, prices going up, which is, uh, I think that's just happening across the board everywhere, not just in bourbon. It's happening just in all walks of life. Uh, and then on top of that, you have... Um, there's there's a couple of distilleries that I think have almost gotten arrogant. And I think somebody commented it and it was almost like a um uh <laughs> rant rant rant. It almost comes off almost like uh somebody commented it on my little book review that there's almost like an arrogance amongst distilleries these days that they could just they just feel like they could put out anything at this point and um, and it'll sell. And I think while there's some truth to that, I don't necessarily blame the distillers. Remember, a lot of these big distilleries are owned by very big corporations, which have marketing people. So you have a lot of those folks really kind of spinning the web as far as what, what comes out, what things are priced at. Um, do the distillers or the master distillers have a say? Sometimes, I mean, I would think so, but I don't really know. Um, you know, case in point is Jim Beam. Jim Beam, to me, has probably taken the biggest downturn for me personally, uh, just because of a lot of the stuff that's coming out of there right now. Um, they seem to be pulling a Buffalo Trace in the way that they're just, they keep adding brands to their portfolio or new bottles that but the difference is but the the thing that jim beam is doing is they're releasing those brands with very 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 young whiskey and charging a premium for it and marketing it like because it's so young it's really special and you should buy it whereas buffalo trace just keeps adding to the to their portfolio of brands although i haven't really seen a big press release from buffalo trace in a very long time maybe because they're busy with their expansion um I mean, the last thing, what was the last thing I heard from Buffalo Trace that E.H. Taylor, the barrel proof rye was going to be, you know, the big E.H. Taylor this year, Stag Jr. losing the junior. I mean, what was the last big thing you guys ever heard about Buffalo Trace, you know, lately? Their Charter Oak series, eh, that doesn't get a lot of attention. Nobody really sees those bottles regardless. Was there a new Weller this year? I don't think they announced Weller Pumpkin Spice yet, did they? Did I miss that? Did I miss Weller Pumpkin Spice? Kind of upset if I did. Um, but Bubble Trace has been kind of quiet as of late. Uh, but Jim Beam to me has really taken the uh the, the downturn because um I mean, yeah, you have Hardens Creek, you have the little book, um, you have some of their their um their experimental series that they've worked on that have come out, they're a little bit, you know, eh. Um all their prices have gone up. And I and I get pricing going up because that's, you know, bourbon is at a point where people are paying a premium. 
And I think, you know, for a long time, we were kind of robbing the distilleries. I mean, we were, how long are we paying, you know, 23 bucks for Heaven Hill, you know, six year ball and bond bourbon, which was, we were literally robbing them. McKenna 10, remember when that shit was like 28 bucks? I mean, for a long time, those were steals and we were kind of benefiting from that before everything took off. Um, I just think that maybe some brands are trying to differentiate themselves in different ways that just quite aren't working. Um, I think they're doing it with finishes. I think they're doing it with weird age statements. I think they're doing it with, um, uh, you know, gimmicks. Um, and I, I just, I just don't see how it could continue, uh, to go on this way. And it's just, it, it just kind of boggles my mind. Heaven Hill is kind of in the middle for me because they've been putting it, they'll put out something like Heaven Hill 17 year, which is just an absolute beast of a bourbon. Um, you know, but then I feel like the Elijah Craig barrel proofs are kind of like, meh, like lately. So I don't know. I, I don't know if it's if it's a product of us just consuming and buying so much whiskey and bourbon that, you know, maybe they just don't have the stocks to make anything really good anymore. Maybe they just don't care. Maybe they just feel like it's going to, you know, whatever we put out, people are going to buy it. Old Farsa, the birthday bourbon. I hate to keep harping on it, but I don't see how that birthday bourbon was blended as a birthday bourbon uh, caliber type of bourbon. It just, there's no way tasting that anybody should have released that as a birthday bourbon. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just interesting to see how things are going. I think that's why a lot of the focus now has shifted to some of these smaller brands and what's happening with that. I think the big brands are the big brands. Um, now Creek now putting out an 18 year, they put out a 15 year, they had their 12 year, their 12 year cast strength. Um, I just feel like like Jim Beam is so like oblivious to their own portfolio. It's like, why would you put out a two-year $80 product when you have a nine-year age stated Knob Creek product? Like, I don't understand the logic. It's because you put it in a different bottle and you're trying to get rid of and, and sell this younger whiskey. I I mean, I get it, but I don't understand. So Hardin's Creek came into here in Ohio, and I saw it at a store today. Hardin's Creek, two year, just lined up. Nobody buying it. 80, 80 bucks for a two year old whiskey. No one buying that shit. Why would you put that out? Because there's something different about it. Like you're playing with the, um, you're playing with the, I think the whole gimmick of it is like you're playing with the entry proof of it. It's like an old school entry proof. And I get that part, but two years old, you want to play with the entry proof, at least put a fucking, six or seven or eight year bourbon out there don't be like let's play with the entry proof we'll let it cook for two years and then we'll sell it for 80 bucks like where's the logic there i i don't i don't get it i think there's a lot of different ways that a lot of the distilleries are going it'll be interesting to see how it all ends up okay conclude with these are my thoughts not yours yeah basically <laughs> um <laughs> don't hold back. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know. It's it's interesting to see what's what's going to happen with a lot of the brands. I think there are smart brands that are doing right by what's available. And then there are brands that are just putting out stuff that's coming off as arrogant. Like, we're going to put this shit in a bottle and you're going to buy it because we expect you to. And I just don't think that can last longer than it than it can. So, but we'll see. So far, it hasn't slowed down. All right. Um, let's reveal the brackets for Blend Again before we get into this blind, guys. Uh, if you guys don't know about Blend Again, here's a little recap from last year and some details about this year. Here we go. We have a top six that are left. And you haven't told us anything about these blends. We don't know. I don't, uh, I don't, I actually don't know to. anything about them. There's it actually shifts gears towards the towards the back end mm -hmm. and finishes really nice. I if they if they were able to successfully uh, blend out the uh, the banana note that is over dominating in some of those jack yeah mm -hmm. those jack products, then I would say whoever blended this has uh, has an excellent skill set.
Jason, do you smell a little bit of a dusty in there? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's got like a dusty funk on it. I, I've been calling that from the beginning. I'm about out of it too, and by about, I mean I'm out of it. It is down to Todd Ritter with his boy named Heaven and Hill and oh, William Davilar with My Own Private Idaho, which means the winner of Blend Together 2021 is Todd Ritter with Heaven yeah. and Hill. Congratulations. Yeah. Let's Great give him a big crack. Congrats, guys. Todd Ritter. Now, what's the blend? We all want to make Wait, it. I know. We got it. Well, and- let's. I know that should get you guys pumped. <laughs> Making that trail every year gets me pumped. Now, obviously, those dates were a little bit off in there, so don't get confused by those because uh, I'm going to have to start a week later because of a work trip. So um, blend again in round one with the Frankenstein blends. We'll start the first week in October. So that's going to be um, October 5th. October 5th, Wednesday night, will be the opening – round of Frankenstein blends uh for uh for uh for blending it now I think I think we're gonna end up with about 12 Frankenstein blends so it'll be a nice it'll be a, a kind of a nice like quick so I think I'll do six and six um and you know crown our winner pretty quickly the couple weeks and then once that's over the 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 American whiskey blends are gonna start and last year we had I think 20 something blends total between the two categories. This year, just in American whiskey category, we have 30 friggin' blends. 30. So 30 people took the time to make a blend, make scale it up a little bit, and then send it in to uh to compete. So um it's gonna be pretty legit. Um I think. Let's see here. Work trip. Where are your priorities? <laughs> How do I already do a trailer for my work project? I'll, I'll get all the funding. <laughs> if you, anybody needs any trailer help, let me know. Um, so, oh, Hoon Young, 12-year MGP thoughts, bald guy bourbon. It's light whiskey. It's light whiskey. It's sweet. It's approachable. There's no frills to it. If you like light whiskey, it, it is what it is. It's very, very sweet. It's like candy corn. A lot of like uh, you know toffee and um, and some. I have a review coming up on it to kind of tell the story about it. Um, but yeah, the guys behind it are amazing. Um, so we'll we'll get into all that you know when I when I review it. But really, um, it's it's not bad. It's it's light whiskey. It's not like full on. Some people see that twelve year MGP. It's not twelve year MGP bourbon. It's twelve year MG, It's MGP light whiskey. So. Um, all right. I really thought it'd be a higher total. Well, I think what happened was, um, I think that some people got a little bit, you know, I don't want to say scared, but a little taken back that, oh shit, not only do I have to make a blend, but I have to make a lot of it. And that was kind of like my, that was kind of like my goal because I really wanted the folks that could really, that really wanted to take this seriously and blend, be able to scale it up a little bit. Cause that is the challenge. Um, so whoever ends up winning this year is really going to des- be deserving of the uh, Blunt Again champion for uh, 2022. Um, now, 
As far as the brackets go, here comes the bracket reveal. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this one. Here's the bracket reveal. This is how it's going to work. So I made this the other day. Um, it's going to be over uh, we eight weeks, it looks like. Um, uh, let me see here. Six, seven. I'm sorry. That's, that's wrong. I got to fix that. It's going to be over nine weeks. So what we're going to have is week one uh, will be uh, five blends. Uh, each week, we're going to have uh, five blends going head to head. Uh, and I'll show you how this is going to work here. The finals will be the last week, which will be week nine, which will actually take us right into about last year, right into the holidays um, or right before the holidays. So here's some close ups of how the bracket shook out. So I put everyone's name and the name of their blend in a list randomizer. I hit go, and this is what it spit out. So week one, uh, week one, you're going to have uh, Justin Kim, Bose Wine Guy, Brandon Bodine, uh, William Davilar, and Terrence Scott going head to head, followed by week two, going Big Vic, Shelby Strunk, Bill Cavanaugh, Kelsey Dime, and then Copper Wolf. Uh, week three, this is the this is a, a big week right here. Dan Colgan, Thunderstruck. Todd Ritter, one blend to rule them all. He's the defending champ. Uh, he'll be in the week three bracket with Rob Shields, Adam Dorman, Oyson Hayes, and uh, Dan Colgan. Uh, we're going to move on to week five. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped. Uh, where's week four? I put week four in here? Where did week four go? Oh, shit. I didn't get week four in there. Uh, week four looks like Shane Smithson, Adam Hinson. Oh, week four is the big one, guy. Okay, so this is when Jeffrey and Darrell are going to go head to head. So week four, Shane Smithson, Adam Hinson, Jeffrey Wack, Darrell Stewart, and Mark Emenecker. Week four is going to be a lot of fun. Um, week five I have here. Week five is going to be Danny Lopez, Dusty Dan, Keith Thompson, Andy Smith, Eric Dis, uh, Dismarius. And then the final week, AW, story time is still in, Darren Clary, Eric Sawyer, and Wise Guy Whiskey Guy. Everybody take a look at Eric Sawyer's uh, name for his blend. I couldn't fit the whole thing in the box, but it says – Basically, the name of his blend is No Butterflies Were Harmed in the Making of This Blend. So I think there are some nice clues that a lot of you guys put into what could be in your blends. Um, Wise Man's Burai, um, AW with Incandescent Conversion, which is a crazy name for a blend. Sunday Eating Cigar Blend, Long Lost Soul, Burai Mageddon, uh, who knows what's in Running with, Sir with Scissors from, <laughs> from Eric De Desmarius, um, Heavenly Blend from Big Vic, The Finisher. Bill Cavanaugh with R2-D2. He had a nice little R2-D2 sticker on his. Uh, and Copper Wolf, Louisiana Swamp Water. Great name. So those are going to be the brackets. Uh, we're going to start probably with a couple weeks doing the Frankenstein blends. And then we're going to get into – I have to plan out who are going to be the judges each and every week as we move uh, further down the line. Now, if you look at the whole bracket – the top two from each of those brackets will make it to the next uh, – to the semifinals. Um, which will be week seven and week eight. Uh, both of them say week eight, but one will be week seven, one will be week eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so we'll have six blends going head to head. The top two from that bracket will then make it to the final four. And that will be the final episode with Fred Minnick and, um, uh, and uh, the world's top whiskey taster, ADHD Whiskey. That night we'll be raising money for St. Jude's Children's Hospital yet again. We have some killer bourbons that are going to be just some killer bottles are going to be um in that uh in that giveaway already um uh man i i was talking to a couple people already about what they're going to donate i know darrell has some bottles we're going to donate i'm giving away a bottle of my um uh i have this i have a maker's mark where it's all every single stave was used was the mendiant so it's all mendiant staves so that one will be in there I think I might throw my Nashville Barrel Company, Houdini, maybe Dr. Cherry Ride in the mix as well, along with a bunch of other really, really cool bottles uh, for uh, to raise some great money for St. Jude. Uh, Horses and Bourbon, who's in the chat, he's actually donating a cowboy hat that he wore at the meetup uh, with the Bourbon Junkies and a bunch of the uh, the bunch of everybody, you know, well, a bunch of whiskey tubers uh, signed it. And uh, I have yet to sign it, so I'm going to sign it. And we'll put that up for auctions for one of you guys to win as well. It's going to be a really, really amazing just, you know, eight, nine weeks of just pure fun. This is, this, is, uh, this is what I love to do each and every year. 
it's it's a really great way to connect with you guys and and you know just do something different with everybody and just show appreciation for the community so i hope everybody is as pumped as i am so it's going to be awesome Young Pei Chang, what's up? Cheers, Jason. Finishing off a Bob Wilderness for eight years. It's very good. But I'm eyeing the Red Breast 27 batch. Three will finally open next week, but I regret passing on four Dare Galex for it. Um, yeah, the, De the Dare Galex this year were really good, Young Pei Chang. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, great. After all, after I talk shit to Jeffrey Wack, it's now I'm going to turn on shop. Yep, Adam Hinson, it's time for you to do your shit. Um, Rob D is going to donate a four gate batch 17. There you go. We already have people. Um, Jason, now I got to work overtime for that auction. <laughs> um, I have to beat whack. Mash and drum. I got bottles to donate. Also, the uh, Todd Ritter, the defending champion. It's going to be a hell of a night. So I can't wait for everybody as we get closer to the holidays. It's perfect. Um, all right, let's put this aside. Uh, before we get into the blind here, I do have a couple things I want to try that were sent to me here. One, so I'm very excited to try, is the new Smoke Wagon Bottled and Bond Rye sent in by A.W. So I want to thank him for that. So Smoke Wagon uh, recently released their Bottled and Bond Rye Whiskey. It's 100 proof. Um, I believe it's their low rye. Yeah, 51% rye. I have not tried this yet at all. Um, we don't really get Smoke Wagons here where I am, so I try to grab them when, I, you know, when I'm uh, traveling. But this one... Adam Dorman says, I have to face the champ in the first round. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be a great finals. Uh, Whiskey Mountains, let me know if you'll need. Yeah, Whiskey Mountain will probably need a tracker for that when the time comes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, OH, uh, the Frankenstein bracket will be uh, – I'll show you guys uh, in two weeks when it starts. With, with that. I'm still waiting for a couple more a uh, couple more blends, so I couldn't finish it just yet. So. So so far on the nose, this is a nice rye. I get I get this is all like black black tea with honey. A little bit of spice here. All the nutmeg, cinnamon goodness that you love. It's definitely minty. I mean, it's what you would expect in a good rye. I think there's nothing, nothing that's like off putting about it or blowing me away. Let's give it a try. I did see the new high malt smoke wagon. I really want to try that one, Big Vic. Oh, damn, that's good. Even for a low rye rye, it's got some good spice to it. Man, what does this remind me of? This has a lot more potency than, than I thought it would for 51% rye. That's just a delicious, solid, really good rye whiskey. I think it has more spice than what you would think, like from like it's kind of up there with like Wild Turkey 101 rye, but a lot less citrusy. Wild Turkey 101 rye to me is just like drinking an orange tree. <laughs> it's so citrusy to me, so orange forward. Um, but this is coming off with way more spice than I thought it would. It's a little bit sweeter. Maybe it's more of like a Knob Creek rye, or it's definitely not an Elijah Craig rye. It's definitely not a Rittenhouse rye. It's definitely not an Old Forester rye. I mean, if I had to compare it, it kind of drinks like a Sagamore, like a little bit like Sagamore rye a little bit, where it's got a nice balance of sweet and spice. That would probably be the one I would compare it to. Yeah, but even Pikesville, um, even Pikesville doesn't have the uh, that type of spice, from what I remember. Whiskey Mountains, barely legal rye, best kind of rye. <laughs> um, all right, here let's uh, let's get the palate going here. A couple more pours here. Is that empty? It is empty. Um, I know it's early, but. I know you guys are starting to see Christmas shit everywhere, so I brought out the Grinch tonight. A little bit of water. A 
Ron Miles, yeah, your Wild Turkey 101 bourbon guess of Pours in the Park. It was so close. I know. I didn't even – it was so close, dude. I know, You know, and I kind of saw it in your face. I said Wild Turkey. I'm like, it smells Wild Turkey to me. It kind of tastes. And you were like, really? But I wasn't even thinking of the rye. So, and that's – that's why I that's why I, I fucking suck when it comes to, you know, like ADHD whiskeys contest. I just like too much shit goes through my head and I can't like think straight. <laughs> All right. So uh, two amazing samples again. Uh, Barrelcraft Spirits. This is the gold label dovetail or the gray label dovetail. And this is the gold label bourbon from Barrelcraft Spirits. Um. I've tasted, I have, I bought the seagrass, which is right here, the gray label seagrass, but I have not tried the dovetail yet. So that actually should be pretty cool to try. This is cast strength. What's the proof on that? 131.54. Damn. Holy shit. John W. says, I screwed myself over on the poor in the park. Poor guesses by starting by starting with Discovery 8 right before. <laughs> uh, Matt Luna, have you tried the Maryland Heritages? Yeah, if you, uh, I did a whole video on Maryland Heritage, all three of them. Kind of dove into a history of all three of them. That was a fun video to make. And I really smell the port in here. This is actually kind of a nice transition into – actually, you know what? I'm going to do that one second because after this, we're going to get into the blind tasting here. And then I'll give you guys a chance to do a little Q&A. Um, Horses and Bourbon guest Traverse City Rye. Oh, that's an interesting rye. Yeah, it was so citrusy. It was hard for me not to be like that. That definitely smells like turkey to me. There's a lot of dickle in there. There's got to be. I smell the dickle funk. In that in that gold label. This is 113.54. It tastes like somebody poured George Dickel whiskey in my espresso. No joke. It tastes like a cup of coffee with Dickel whiskey in it. So it's really kind of, it's like a complete mind fuck for me right now because I love coffee, but I'm not that crazy about Dickel. So I don't really know how to think about this right now. <laughs> this is a complete mind fuck. Uh, what is happening? What's up, Eric Evanson? Yeah, the gold lay Yeah, look how dark this whiskey is though. This is the gold label uh, barrel. That is some dark shit. Crazy, right? Yeah, I, I don't I don't really know how to um, put this in context. Have you picked up the new wh rare character whiskey for tuning yet? No, no, Big Vic, it's not even near me yet. I'm I'm gonna be near I'm gonna be in Indiana and near Kentucky on Friday for uh, doing a couple more Starlight picks. So I'm gonna do some hunting out there and see if I can find anything new. I just realized you remember the 21st night of September. The 21st, I just realized. Do you remember the 21st night of September? Nope. It always says, damn, I'm all the way in week six. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long haul. Yeah, go labels 500 bucks. I wouldn't pay 500 for that. I like the coffee. But there's too much of that nickel mineral mineral uh, minerality in it. All right, let's go to the dovetail here. Jeffrey Wack, the Master Drum Durrell versus Wack is an epic round two. I know, and you guys are like, uh, you know, you're going. There's th remember, there's three other people in that bracket. So, will both of you make it through? Will one of you make it through? It's going to be a lot of trash talking. I'm just saying. Oh, this smells a lot better. This is more on the port side. A lot of port influence, actually. It's very, very uh, dark fruit forward. 
But I'm also picking up maple syrup, which I think is from the rum. That tasted weird coming off the. Uh, that tasted weird coming off the uh, the, the dickle one. Shit, that's dark, man. I put this against like you put these against these two. Like, look at the color difference in the middle. This is the the barrel gold label. Look how dark that is. That's crazy. It's like it's like it's like dickle extract. It sounds awful. Yeah, that sip was better. I'm getting a lot more of the rum in this, I think. It does have rum in it, doesn't it? I think it does. <laughs> oh, my God. It tastes rum. I think there's rum in it. Great finish on this one. Damn. That one's really good. Yeah. All right. I think the palette's ready. Holy shit, it's 1024 already? I got to do this shit. Okay. Here we go. Finishes. Finished whiskeys. I have six. That's right, six. And I was told to put it in order. Uh, so F, yeah, so F is last. That's D. That's B. This is E. So this should be, okay, that's C. B and A. Okay. A, B, C. Got it. All right. So if you guys missed it early on, I chose a bunch of different um, different finished whiskeys to put into this blind tasting. And um, basically, uh, the, the whiskeys were chosen uh, by my girlfriend, and she poured these, and... I don't know which one she selected. The only one that I know that's in here somewhere is the new Barstown Bourbon Company Chateau de la Bade because I wanted to see how it would do against other finished uh, whiskeys. So, and all of them, I told her to pick different finishes. So it could be anything. It could be a, I, I don't know. There's, I know. I think there was a port. There was a sherry. There was a, a toasted. All of them are different finishes. I'm actually going to try to go through here and pick out the finish I think it is. Um, so that's kind of the challenge for me tonight. I'm going to kind of challenge myself a little bit because I haven't done so in a little while. I'm going to just make sure these are right. A, B, C. Yep, D, E, F. Okay. Yeah, that's F, I'm pretty sure. Okay, perfect. All right. So the answers are right underneath Max Scherzer here. I'm not going to touch Max Scherzer right now. I'm going to grab my uh, my little notebook. Um, yes, yeah, serious color variation. That's the first thing I noticed, Scotty, when I looked at these. Like, like, look how light this one is compared to the rest. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, what is that one that it's so light? I'm not, I'm just, I'm not sure. Um, E is seagrass. You heard it here first, says Isaiah. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens here. So I'm going to, um... Gonna play a little music here. Nice and light. And as always, as I taste through these, uh, as I taste through these with you guys, um, it's always a good time for Q and A. Let's get the conversation going. If you have any questions for me, whether it be whiskey related, whether it be about my Mets or my Falcons or the NFL or baseball or any voice you want me to do. Let me know down in the chat, and I'll happily oblige. So, E is so light. Yeah, E is really light, especially compared to the others. First question, what's your thought on Whistlepig six-year bourbon? I just picked it up. I have not had it yet, but I am definitely want to do a, uh, a review on it. So we'll see what happens. Um, yes, this is the Heaven Hill Tasting Notes notebook, John W. Damn, you got some good eyes. Here's the, uh, there it is, Heaven Hill. The Heaven Hill Tasting Notes Whiskey Book. 
Holy shit. Is that Rob Whiskey in the Six? What's up, Master? What's up, Master? Cheers, homie, at the Master Gen Whiskey in the Six. Rob, what's going on, bud? Nice to see you, man. Um, all right. So let's start running through these. I have no idea. This should, this should be interesting. I should uh, probably fail miserably at this. So we'll see what happens. Um, JG the Valley Girl. <laughs> Oh my god, this fucking E is so fucking light. Okay. Go here first. A. Oh man, what the hell are these? A is actually a little nutty to me. Um, what is happening with Bell Me versus Nelson Brothers? 12 points extra to answer in Kermit voice. <laughs> Uh, well, the idea is Bell Mead will eventually go away and Nelson Brothers will be the main brand. So, there you go. Jason, when's the Maker's Mark pick you did with the Hawk coming out? Eric, man, that was out, like, last year, dude. That's done. Got it. Over. <laughs> hey, what's up, Katie? Katie, you gotta message me. You gotta let me know what bottle you guys want uh, for sending me that great tealing pick. So, yep. Question from James Taylor. When the experts review a bourbon, why do they tend to say spice without breaking that down further as spice is so broad, black pepper, mint, clove? Um, I think some reviewers just try to make it a little bit more, uh, I guess, understandable for folks. I mean, when people aren't like super, you know, on trying whiskey all the time, Sometimes if you if you break it down for mint, like mint, nutmeg, cinnamon, black pepper, it might be hard for them to kind of integrate that all together um, or associate that flavor with what they're tasting. So I think sometimes they just use a little bit more of a broad terminology to do that, or maybe it's because they can't really discern the different ones. Maybe that's all they're just, it's a spice, but they can't really figure out what spice it is. So that's how I think it is. I want Charger Bing to explain to me why the Mets are better than the Braves. <laughs> I, I think it's the pitching. The, the pitching is what makes the Mets so good. We say so. The Mets love the, uh, the Max Scherzer and the Adult uh, of the Gram. Yes. We say so. Better, better. <laughs> All right, let's try this one. Oh shit, that's good. I got a lot of chocolate in that. Tons of chocolate. I hear the Mets set a new record today. Yes, the Mets have set the single season record for being hit by baseballs. Hit by pitches, the Mets set the record. Everyone was just fucking thrown at the Mets this year. Jason, what were your thoughts on Four Gates, St. Charente, Batch 18? Captain Ice, that's one of my favorite batches this year. I love the St. Charente. It's, I think it's a, that's all cognac. I think it's delicious. I love that one. Um, it's a good night when the voices are being pulled out. Black Burma Family says, White Sox suck. Only got hit twice today. Oh my God, you do that voice so well, Jar Jar. <laughs> Man, this, this one's good. I don't. I don't know what A is, but it's coming over as like a chocolate bomb. Wow. What would give you like that chocolate fruity characteristic? That is so good. All right, let's go to the next one here. Oh, way more fruit forward here. Guess I'm getting raspberry and coconut on the nose, which is nuts. Um, let's uh, switch it up here. Keep it nice and smooth here. Uh, Red and reviewed the rocket. I haven't gotten any of those yet, and I'm pissed. I want to. I'm a huge fan of Redwood Empire. I want to try their Rocket Rye and the you know the the other like the special releases they have coming out. I want my hands on those cast rank variants that are coming out. 
But the only ones that, that Ohio gets are the, uh, we get the three standards. I mean, I love that I can get the Lost Monarch here at any given point, but the other two, the other two are okay, but I love that Lost Monarch for sure. Um, at any cigar blend recently, thoughts? Not anything other than the Batch 85, Thurston. Batch, 30, batch 85 is an absolute monster. I prefer a mild cigar. What do you suggest with a whiskey pairing? Austin, just go find yourself like a good Connecticut cigar. The Oliva, I like to go with Olivas. I know I say it all the time, but Oliva is probably my favorite brand. They make a great Connecticut. It's light. Also, Alec Bradley Magic Toast is a great cigar to kind of pair with anything. Um, so, for Voice Impression College. <laughs> Thanks, EJ. I'd like to give your fathoms a hard time, but I do. I, but I have no room to talk as a Panthers fan. Oh, gee, you're a Panthers fan? How did that happen, Adriana? Yeah, what the hell is that? I have no clue. This one's chocolatey. This one is. It's got like this butterscotchy spice to it. Is that a toasted? What the hell? This is gonna be a disaster. Uh, this was a very bad idea by me because I can't I can't pick out any of this shit. All right, let's go to this one. Oh, this one. Okay. All right, this one's getting a little bit. All right, this one smells like a toasted something. Now, whether it's one of the double oaks or a toasted, I'm not sure. Hmm, okay. Pee Wee Herman is a big fan of Dickel Extract. Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> I don't think I can do Pee Wee Herman. Hi, Conky. <laughs> yeah, I can't really do Pee Wee. That wasn't terrible, though. Oh, that is toasted marshmallow and ice cream. That's got to be something toasted. That is all toasted marshmallows. I think that one is toasted something. Toasted marshmallows? Toasted marshmallows on that one. This one's chocolate. I have no idea what B is. I'm a little bit scared of E. I don't know what is the, that's that light. Master John, you uh, miss you at the Bastards Ball. Hey, what's up, Eric Waite? Yeah, being in September, dude, September is just a little bit crazy for me. October is going to be a little bit nuts. Um, hopefully things wind down in November and then obviously the holidays. So, you know, my mom's building a house here in Ohio. So I've been helping with that. Uh, it's just been, it's just been a busy couple months. That was solid. A couple more tries. <laughs> oh, you're gold. Yeah. How does Elmo like it? I don't know if I can do it. I mean, I think, I feel like my Jar Jar and Elmo are pretty, like, close. Ooh. All right. This one's actually pretty dark, guys. Okay. I am really feeling that one. That one's good. This is, I'm getting a grapiness to it. So I'm feeling like, I mean, is it Armagnac? Is it Cognac? Is it Port? I have no fucking clue. This could go all wrong. Oh man, that's good. Is that the Chateau de Labaud? I feel like I got, I just got blueberry in that. Nice little spice. Remember, the Chateau de la Bar is the only bottle in this blind that I know is in this blind. Because I just want to see how it does. Um, so far, that one is probably... That one's up there. And I really liked C as well. But A was like a complete chocolate bomb, which was nice. I meant to say in your gold. <laughs> the voice of Jar Jar and Elmo had a little space Muppet. <laughs> 
I miss the times when I could just walk in any cigar shop and pick up a Puente Añejo or Opus XX for like 20 bucks. Yeah, Young Pei Chang. Yeah, cigars have gone up a lot completely. Totally get that. Um, I think C might be my favorite right now. Oh, C just has. I don't know if C is the... I don't, I'm sorry, D. I don't know if <laughs> the D. Of course, the D is always the favorite. I don't know if D is the. Uh, I feel like it's drinking with a much more heftier proof to it. Damn. D is good. Okay. I think D is my favorite so far. It's just hard for me to discern exactly what that is. All right. I'll see if I'm missing any uh, any questions here. Uh, James Taylor says, we might send you a bottle if you're uh, your pick for a co-reviewer. We review a quality bourbon as Beavis and... <laughs> and... <laughs> as Beavis and... Aw. Oh, that's cool. Bloodhead? Yeah, you love love the D. So guys, Whiskey in the Six, if you guys haven't checked out their, uh, their podcast, definitely go check out um, Jeremy and, uh, and Rob do a... a uh, a podcast together remind me the name of the podcast rob you can drop the link in the chat if you want go for it man oh my god this light one is like on another planet like where is that one coming from i have no idea where this one's coming out of so have you guys seen that the new masters keep the unforgotten has been dropping around lately you know, this makes me nuts. Like Wild Turkey, you know, they have the single Rick House and the Master's Keep dropping at the same time. I am all over both of those bottles. Oh, my God. Like, who here is hunting that Unforgotten, that Burai blend, the next Master's Keep? I know a lot of you guys in the chat are, are, are after that one. Come on. Yep. Oh, the, risk, the Whiskey Rant. Rob, the whiskey rant, how have I not been on that podcast yet? I fucking rant about whiskey all the time. <laughs> Rob, get me on that shit. <laughs> That's all I do is rant about whiskey. <laughs> um, anyone get one yet? A WJK says, me. Black Burn Fix is dropping Chicago. What? Uh, I need one. I need one so bad. Cameron Lund, you're, you're telling me you would pay two? Yeah, I'd pay two fifty for it. Cameron Lund, yep. I'd probably pay. I'm not going to say what I'd pay to get a single Rick House Camp Nelson bottle from. Because uh, the way they're telling the story, and this is part of the marketing thing that that Wild Turkey or Campari is doing, you know, that that warehouse is being decommissioned, so we're supposed to like not see any whiskey from that warehouse again. That's how they're positioning it. So if that's the case, Camp Nelson has some of the most unique Russell Reserve picks I've ever had come out of that warehouse. I'm not saying that the single Rick House tastes like that, but even if there's a possibility that it could, I'd be willing to pay the money for it. So hell yeah, I'd pay two fifty dollars for it. If there's a bottle that I'm going to overpay for or pay for full price or even a little extra, it's going to be a turkey. And you guys should know me by now. That's I, I'm gonna do that with Turkey just because I love it so much. So Masters Keep, not Camp Nelson, dropped here. Yeah, Black Bourbon Family. That's what I figured. Whiskey Six, waiting for you to come on over and watch House of Dragons and then rant together. <laughs> that's right. We got yeah, House of Dragons. Anybody watching House of Dragons or watching the Lord of the Rings um, series on Amazon or HBO Max, uh, respectively? B. Snyder, what does the tattoo in your right arm say? I haven't gotten that question in a long time. So uh, it actually goes all the way up to my shoulder. I got, I'm got. i rocking the uh, the farmer's tan right now. Uh, so yeah, rocking the real nice tan. So this is, it says, uh, Vivi, oh, uh, I'm sorry, Viva OJ Como Se Moriata Domani, which in Italian means live today as if you'll die tomorrow. So that's what it means. Now, when people walk up to me and ask me, like, hey, what does that tattoo say? I always I always make up crazy shit. I always be like, um, oh, it says that Mike, uh, it says macaroni cheese is my favorite. 
in Italian. And they're like, oh, you must really like mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is this is what happens when you uh, when you work, when you build a deck at your girlfriend's house for like three weekends straight, you get really dark uh, tan lines. <laughs> It says Chateau de la Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Watching both, but I'm liking Rings of Power better at the moment. Okay. Uh, liking War of the Rings, but House of Dragon has terrible special effects and storytelling, not like Game of Thrones. Um, most tattoos in other languages just translate to regret. Yeah, no, my, I love mine. House of Dragons is great so far, but I've liked Matt Smithson's Doctor Who. Mac and Cheese is Tony's favorite. <laughs> Lies, it means long live OJ, he's innocent, will never die. Source, I am a Mormon. <laughs> Robotic. All right, E. Let's go back to E here. Because E is the complete outlier. I have... This is extremely malty. Oh, shit, I know what this is. It just clicked. I know what that is. I know what it is. And he's in the chat tonight. I know what it is. Let me taste it. Oh, yeah, that's got to be it. Man, did that just get like real malty and coffee and toasty. I do not remember that being that good. That is getting better and better. Ooh. E. I think I know what E is. I think I'm pretty sure I know what E is. Uh, okay. I'm just going to write it down. I forget. I don't want to forget what I'm thinking here. Okay. Uh, I only wear pasties outdoors in the sun. Protect the nips. <laughs> you got to protect the nips. You really do. <laughs> Is this the ADHD BBC pick? Uh, Lionel G, no. It's not the... No. It's not... Although, I will say, Matt, I've been meaning to tell you, your blend... Every time I go back to it to take a sip, it's it's getting better and better. Like when I first tried it, it was it was really good. But man, I think as it sits and it mingles, that burai is what did I say in the review? That it's just blended a burai. Dude, it's good. It, if anybody knows how to blend, it's 88 whiskey. Dude's the man. All right. Last one here. Yeah, just thinking about Nard Dog now. I'm a, I'm, I want to get another tattoo. I've been talking about it for a little while, but I, I have to do some research about some tattoo artists here in Columbus. Uh, I want to get something dedicated to my grandmother, uh, like something like right here on the inside, on my bicep here. I don't know if I just wanted to say like Nona or, or Rosa, which is her name. Her name is Rose. Italian, it's Rosa, R-O-S-A. Uh, so I don't know. I'm like, do I put a, just go all in and just do a fucking wooden spoon in a fucking vat of sauce? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I do a fucking meatballs, a plate of meatballs. I don't know what to do. Um, it's something I'm definitely thinking about, though. Oh, that last one. The last one has this really velvety texture to it. It's, this is going to be really tough to pick out these finishes. I just don't, I don't really, out of all the bottles that were out, the only ones I really think I know are E and C. So this one and this one, I feel like, I think this is a toasted something. And I, and I think I know what E is. I'm just, I don't want to say it yet. Um, my colleague. <laughs> Mark Emmenecker, no microwave on the pizza. No. No. I could go real Italian and just be like, uh, this, would, this would have basically been my grandmother like using technology. Cuckoo. <laughs> hey, cuckoo. <laughs> hey, Google. Hey, Google. <laughs> 
All right, I got to go back through A, B, and um, oh shit, there is an F. I got to finish trying the last one here as we wind things down tonight. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. This was a blast tonight. Uh, I'm off next week, which will be kind of a nice week off before, man, all the blend again and shit starts. And I think somewhere sandwiched in between, we're going to have uh, Kelvin Cooperage is going to be on, talk a, bit, a little bit about the science of barrels, uh, barrel shortage, and some of the other stuff going on. So, Man. All right. Let me run through these again real quick. A. Man, A is just a beast on the nose now. It's very, very dark fruit forward. This is all just all chocolate. And I mean, is that like just like raspberry and cherry and all the good, all the good things. ADSD whiskey. It is. Port Perry Perry. That is like peanut butter and jelly in a glass. What the fuck is that? That is so damn good. Um, I said when they released the the uh, Ruby Rye Springs, just kind of essentially the same thing as the Port Perry Perry. Uh, it's just a it's a port finished rye. Uh, that it was like Midwinter's Night's Dram for adults. <laughs> and I'm sorry to say it's like yeah, Midwinter's Night's Dram is good, but th those two. The Port Perry Perry and the and the Ruby Kelvin, uh, I'm sorry, the Ruby Rye Springs. That's like it's like Midwinter's Night's nice Dram for adults. It's like high proof, high age, like kick your kick your kick your teeth in type of flavor in that thing. That's that's what I equated to. Midwinter's Night's nice Dram. I don't know. For me, it's 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 good. Um, I love it as like a you know a great you know December whiskey. Obviously. Um, this year, we're not getting one. We're getting a white port because uh, it's their 10th anniversary. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Young Pei Cheng, I have not had Kelvin Cooper John before. So. Yeah, Ruby Rye Springs 80s. Yeah, they're both uh, port finish rise. So, yep. For the tattoo, perhaps your grandmother's name in her own writing, her signature. Dan C., Great minds, buddy, because that's what I was thinking of doing. Now, my grandmother came here right off the boat from Italy. She didn't really go to school. She didn't really know how to write or read English once she got here. But my grandmother didn't learn how to, you know, sign her own checks. So she kind of learned how to do her own signature. So I was, And it's a very unique signature. So I was thinking of doing that as a tattoo on my bicep. So... Me and you were kind of along the same lines right there. Um, I'm going to say that A is... I'm going to say A is a cognac finish. Just because of the chocolate and the, the, the dark fruit, the nuttiness I'm getting. I'm going to say A is a cognac. Just based on what I know of the bottles that were chosen. I'm going A Cognac. Let's go to B. Oh. Man, all these are so fucking good. I think B could be the... Um, the Chateau Labaud. I'm going to say that's the Armagnac. Maybe A is the Armagnac. <laughs> I remember like before when I was saying how the Armagnac keeps changing every time I go to it. That's what I'm kind of getting. I don't, I didn't see, I didn't see a release, Brian, for the, uh, for the regular Midwinter's Night's Ram that's going to be coming out. I just saw the new one, the White Port one. So, all right. Number three was a toasted marshmallow. I think this is a toasted something. 
Because this is all marshmallows and graham cracker. Okay. D. D, I think, was my favorite. And it's so super sweet. Oh, my God. D, D might be my favorite. Maybe D is the cognac. Maybe A is the... Ah, shit. But I don't know what F is either. Man, this is tough. Try to do, just set up a blind for yourself, guys, with different finishes and see if you can pick out the blind. See if you can pick out the finish. This one's tough. I had an Ambur, uh, an Amburana uh, finish in there, but I didn't want to include it because it would just stick out like a sore thumb. Space Jam was in the mix. That could be Space Jam. I mean, fuck it, D. Let's guess Space Jam. I don't know. Maybe it is Space Jam. That one's really good. That's That might be my favorite. Um, This one, I think I definitely know what it is. And then the last one. What the hell is this one? This one's really unique. What the hell is that? Maybe it's a double oaked? What time is it? 10.54? Man. I wish I had more time to kind of break these down. But I'll say... I don't know. I'll say that's a double oaked. It's got chocolate to it. It's got like... Uh, it, it's got the texture of that whiskey is what's winning me over. And sometimes that happens with a double oaked profile. Uh, where you get some of like this extra... Just like tannin and heft to it. Yeah, I'm... Well, this is what I do, Big Vic. I overthink everything. Well, not everything. But when it comes to whiskey and blinds... I definitely overthink it. Um, all right, so let's go. Let's go for this. I said that the A was cognac. I thought the B was the Chateau de Labad. I think C is something toasted. I think D might be the Space Jam, <laughs> which was a port finish. And the only reason why I probably know that is because it's one of my picks. Um, the E, I'm going to say right now. I think that is Sunday evening Scotch Scotches starlight pick which was a bourbon finished in a uh, highland scotch cask because that's what it reminds me of and then f i'm just going to say something maybe double oaked so that's what we're going to go with all right you guys ready for this here we go the max scherzer reveal is ready donald ranch is in time for the end uh all right let's see what we got here See, Young Pei Chang, that bottle was in the mix, but I don't think that one was selected in here. That one is a very distinct praline note to it, so I don't know. We'll see. All right, I'm going to try not to look at all of them. I'm going to try to kind of slide it down. So let's see what the first one was. Holy shit. So, A... I said it was chocolate. There was some nuttiness. I said cognac. What is it? There's a lot of bottles here. Um, where the hell is it? It's right here. It's the Barstown Ferrand. This is cognac. Is it cognac? Cognac. Cognac finish. Nailed it. Okay. I'm feeling a little bit better. I don't remember this one being that good and that chocolatey. When I first tried Ferran, I was a little disappointed in it. Man, this shit has gotten better. I'll tell you that. This is an absolute chocolate bomb right now for me. Wow. I get I get chocolate on um, on cognac. What about you? you guys on cognac finishes? You pick up chocolate at all? Quick question. All right. One for one. One for one. Two. I said, I said that that might be the Chateau de Labaud. Let's see if I was right. Uh, oh no, what am I doing? That says B. It's all here. This is, it is. Okay. This is the Chateau de Scooby Doo. Honestly, yeah, I mean, I picked it, but I literally just fucking drank it. So it's not that impressive, guys. I'm just going to chop that up to, I just drank it like, you know, a half hour ago. So, but you know what it was that clued me in? Blueberries. That's 
right, ADHD whiskey, blueberries. Okay. C, I thought was something toasted. Um, so C is, what the hell is she right here? What is that? Shit, the Penelope Toasted Mass and Journey pick. And honestly, I mean, yeah, it, th this might be, this n might not be fair because it's like, I have picks in here that I like selected. So I know the profiles, but yeah, that, that was totally like a toasted pick. Not bad. Okay. I, I couldn't tell you what toasted product it was. It just felt like it was something toasted. I wish I actually, I would have felt better if I called out a Penelope, like the actual one that we did. Um, but I wasn't, it tastes a little, this, these, this one is changing the more it opens up. So, um, I don't know. I'm kind of disappointed. I didn't call it out as the Penelope pick, but I did call it out something toasted. I'll give myself like a half a point for that one. Not a full point though. All right. Last, this one, this was my favorite. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to give all the credit to big Vic for this because <laughs> he nailed it. <laughs> it was. It's the it's the spice jam, it's the spice jam new loop pick. If anyone has seen that, it is Scott dunking a basketball. It's called Spice Jam, and it's this was my favorite tonight. This guys, this new loop pick is probably one of the best finished bourbons I've had this year, if not the best. It's ridiculous, and you know what? They're still available at Keg and Bottle. There's still more of them. It's crazy. I just spent an hour and a half editing a smoke wagon uncut the younger video. Just realized I released that video last month. Fuck. <laughs> it is. I was just going to say, didn't you review that already? You just edited that. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, this one, this one was easy and, and I got it right. This is 70 evening scotch is starlight. Um, this is, um, so Sunday evening scotch did a pick with us at Starlight when we were there. And this was the Sunday evening Starlight pick. Where it was kind of an Indiana Scotland mix label. This one is great. I don't remember like I remember it being good, but it has evolved over time. Like you would not think that you would get chocolate out of this light colored glass. And that's exactly what's happening. Um it's it's like chocolate and toastiness and maltiness all in one glass the last one i know i got wrong because i don't i don't think i got this one right the last one i said was a double oak something and um yeah i was way off <laughs> that is not a double oaked anything really the last one is the penelope architect which is finished in French oak staves. That kind of makes me mad because I love French oak and the fact that I didn't pick that out kind of bums me out. But that is really good. So this is batch, this is build number two. I think the first one had a youthful note to it. Um, but the last one, this, this latest one here is so much better than that first one. Um, yeah, finished with French oak staves. I I would have never guessed that. That one was tough. Um, Jeffrey Wax says, I love that Starlight. Yeah, it's really good. So now, now let's rank them. Let's rank them. Because there are some, um, there are some bottles here that I think that are, you know, a lot of money. And there are some bottles here that are not so much money. So if I had to rank these by flavor, I think the Ferrand made a comeback for me tonight. That bottle I was not that crazy about in the beginning. Um, I think the Spice Jam was my favorite. The New Lou Spice Jam. For sure. It's fucking delicious. The Ferrand... Man, the Ferran definitely got better over time. Man, 
And Sunday evening Scotch's pick has gotten just better and better. Which one is that one? That's the Ferran, the A. You know what? I'm going to have to go Spice Jam Mulu. Then I'm going to go Chateau de Scooby-Doo. I'm going to put that one second. But our Spice Jam pick, I think, beats it. And it's cheaper. Um, followed up by... I'm going to put Sunday Evening Starlight third because it's so damn good. Uh, followed by the um, Chateau de Scooby-Doo. Actually, no, I really like the Chateau de Scooby-Doo. Yeah, I might have to put that one ahead of uh, Sunday Evening Scotch of Starlight. And then last place, I'll probably put the Architect, Penelope, second to last. So I think that's my ranking. So uh, this was very challenging here. Hey, what's up, Bubble Bath Bourbon? Uh, hey, Jason, did you get a similar baby pattern, new oak note on the, on the what? On the Architect in Redbreast, Kentucky. I don't know about baby powder, but uh, the Architect, the first batch, I got that new oak note to it. Not the, not, not this one. So, uh, so in conclusion tonight, guys, Ferrand got better. Chateau de La Bade, while I don't think it's as good as the first one, it's a great finished whiskey. Probably one of the best ones that they put out so far this year. Um, what else? Finished whiskey is not easy to pick out. I would highly recommend you guys try it. Um, the Spice Jam, my number one. If you guys want more of it, there's still some available at Keg and Bottle. You can go there now and order it if you want. Um, and let's see. Next week, I'm off. The following week, we kick off Blend Again, and baby. It is fucking time. Hope you guys are as pumped as I am. Um, thank you so much for all the support. Do all the things, guys. Like the video. Subscribe. I'm getting close to 75,000 subscribers, guys. I want to hit that mark real soon. So uh, tell all your friends about the channel. Uh, love all of you. Thanks so much for the support. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share with. Patreons, I think it might be time for an after-party live stream. So I might see you there soon. Cheers. See you next time right here on the Mass and Drum. Take care, everybody. Do all the things. Subscribe, like, share. YouTube slash mash, the mash and drum. It's the show. See you later, guys. Go, go check out Women of Whiskey's next. Take care.